If I think back to a year ago where, where we're standing, there was virtually nothing here. So to look at it now and see the, the rail tracks that have been developed, it's quite an accomplishment. If we don't have rail cars, we can't move product. So we need a fleet of 1,600 rail cars. A rail car isn't as, as simple as you might think. Uh, you drive down the road, you see rail cars, and they all kind of look the same. The selection of a rail car isn't just one decision made at one time. It's lots of decisions made along the way with the help and the input of all of the stakeholders. We needed to consider what size of rail car we needed and what we needed to know was how many rail cars did we have the capability to load at the complex and how big could the rail car be if it was going to be shipped across North America and could our customers actually unload it. So we had to choose the size. We had to choose the components that would make sense from an ergonomic perspective. We had to choose a paint that would protect the interior and the exterior of the car because on the interior of the car it mattered what temperature we were washing at um, and how, what the force and the angle of the nozzle of the water delivering it. And lastly, um, we needed project development to give us input on the, the dimensions of the rail car because we had some restricted clearances in our loading building. Around February of this, this year, we uh, secured an agreement with Greenbrier to produce 1,600 rail cars. From that point, we moved towards working with the rail car lessors who are ultimately going to lease the cars back to Interpipeline. It is pretty big scale, 1,600 rail cars. It's effectively going to take us almost an entire year to have them manufactured. And from the transportation aspect, when you sit at a crossing and you watch all those rail cars go by, a typical train is somewhere between 80 cars and 120 cars, depending on the commodities that are moving on the train. We're going to load 16 to 18 rail cars a day at the plant, and they're gonna move out from there across North America on a journey that's going to take them roughly 90 days before they come home. We're one of the first plastics fleet, if not the first plastics fleet, to have GPS installed on every single rail car. With the GPS chips, we will be able to know where our car is at any time, so we will know where it is and what track it's sitting on in the storage yard. We will know how many minutes away it is from the destination. We will know when the customer has received the product because it will go through its electronic geofence and we will be able to say with certainty that the customer has gotten the delivery of their product. The main message we want people to know is that the track is ready. You see it here. We'll have a connection to the North American Rail Network in place. We have the rail cars and we'll have agreements to be able to move our product to destination.